So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> pag nulit tayo, wala tayong may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. 
Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget. Or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nahuli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan 
o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basehan ang isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat and welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Inaasahan namin na kayo ay ligtas at nasa mabuting kalusugan. Ako si Sheila CR, ang inyong moderator. Sa hapong ito, mula sa solid waste management na topic natin noong isang linggo, ay pag-uusapan naman natin ang agriculture sector. Our discussion this afternoon focuses on how we can raise the productivity of small farmers by strengthening individual property rights and farmers' organizations. Upang buksan ang ating webinar, pakinggan natin si Dr. Celia Reyes, ang presidente ng PIDS. Ma'am Cel? Salamat, Sheila. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Let me begin by acknowledging the presence of the following. 
uh, from the Department of Agrarian Reform. We have Undersecretary for Policy, Planning and Research, Virginia Orogo, uh, Undersecretary Luis Menrado Pangulayan, Undersecretary um, David Ero, Assistant Secretary Paolo Hostino Quazon, Assistant Regional Director Maria Ana Francisco, OIC Assistant Secretary Aurita Ang, Director Joey Sumatra, Director jo Marjorie Aison, Director Nestor Bayoneto, Director Robert Anthony Yu, Regional Director Eugene Faliante, Regional Director Primo Lara, Regional Director Maria Celestina Tang, Regional Director Leonides Villarreal, OIC Regional Director Ismael Ayaay, OIC Director uh, Garland Leila Orteros, National Project Director for Split Project Homer Tobias. Um, welcome to PIDS, all the representatives from DAR. And then from the Department of Agriculture, we have Undersecretary for Operations and Agri-Fisheries Mechanization, Ariel Kayanan. National Economic and Development Authority, Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda. Board of Investments, Governor Napoleon Concepcion. Philippine Guarantee Corporation Senior Vice President Emmanuel Torres. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, we have Vice President Eduardo Reyes and Assistant Vice President Edgardo Luzano. From the House of Representatives, Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department, Executive Director Manuel Aquino and Director Dominador Gamboa. Department of Foreign Affairs Director Jim San Agustin, Agricultural Credit Policy Council Executive Director Jocelyn Alma Badiola and Director Magdalena Casuga. Department of Finance Director Ricardo Bobis, Department of Foreign Affairs Director Ivan Frank Olea, Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food Chief of Staff Reggie Tamania, and um, from our PIDS Board of Trustees, we have Dr. Gilberto Llanto and um, Attorney Rafael Lotelia. Uh, we also have uh, Cuervo Valuers and Advisory President and CEO Federico Cuervo. And from the academy, we have University of the Philippines School of Economics Professor Emeritus Solita Monsod, Southern Luzon State University President Dorazi Zoleta Nantes, and Vice President Frederick Villa, uh, De La Salle University Dean Marites Tionco, St. Louis University Associate Dean April Gumnad, University of Bohol Dean Amon Dennis Tirol, and uh, Malay College Dean Jimmy Mami. Mindanao State University Vice President for Planning and Development, Labimombao Makabando, and Director Janebib Recentes Magolama. Directors and officials from the Southern Luzon State University, University of Philippines, Los Baños, Cagayan State University, University of Asia and the Pacific, and Benguet State University, and to all those from the academe. We also have with us this afternoon, International Fund for Agricultural Development, Philippines Country Director, Alessandro Marini, Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture Country Director Ami Melissa Chua, World Bank Senior Social Development Specialist Carlos Perez Prito, Unang Hakbang Foundation President Oli Lucas, Masaganang Sakahan Director Daniel Agustin, Forest Sustainability Lab Associate Director Marian Leonafe Pastor Kide, Aniba ng Manggagawa sa Agricultura National Coordinator Roland Vival. Let me also greet our guest colleagues from the government, academe, civil society, media, private sector, as well as those who are watching through the PIDS Facebook page. Good afternoon and welcome to our third webinar for this month. The country's agricultural sector, which comprises a significant portion of the country's total employment, estimated to be about 25% in 2020, is known to face low productivity issues. In 2018, data from the Philippine Statistics Authority show that farmers have the highest poverty incidence among the country's basic sectors at 31.6%. Moreover, its contribution to the country's gross domestic product has been declining from 15% in 2000 to 10% in 2020. Over the years, various policies and programs have been implemented to help in the development of our agricultural sector, as well as in the improvement of our farmers' lives. This afternoon, we will be presenting three PIDS studies that specifically looked at the role of farmers' land tenure security and access to credit, as well as their membership in agrarian reform beneficiary organizations, or ARBOs, in enhancing agricultural productivity. The first study, authored by PIDS Supervising Research Specialist Ivory Mike Agala, 
to discuss the benefits and problems in relation to the subdivision of collective land titles under Department of Agrarian Reforms parcelization program. It noted that while Filipino farmers have benefited from land reform programs in the country, many of them, including farmers who have been awarded with collective certificate of land ownership awards, are still struggling to overcome poverty. One of the findings of the study is that farmers awarded with collective certificate of land ownership awards are experiencing problems related to the collective agreement arrangement that discourage them from making long-term investments on their lands and thus resulting in low productivity. Later, we will know more about the difference in agricultural performance between individual CLOA and collective CLOA farms. Another study, which she also authored, focused on Arbo member households engaged in farm production, particularly their borrowing incidents, providing financial services such as loans or suitable credit facilities to farmers will increase their agricultural productivity and income. In this study, we will understand why membership in an Arbo is important and how it helps farmers have better credit access. More importantly, we will see how the parcelization program may help improve the borrowing incidents among farmers. The third paper authored by PIDS Vice, Vice President Marife Ballesteros and PIDS Research Specialist Jenica Ancheta is related to the second study. It looked at how Arbos benefit farmers, particularly in terms of access to credit and post-harvest and marketing services. It also identified challenges that Arbos face in the process. Later, we will hear some of the study's recommendations on how to improve farmers' participation in the higher value chain. These findings will be uh, better supported by the insights of those from the ground. Thus, we invited a farmer leader of an Arbo, Mr. Marlon Talavera, chairperson of the Galalan Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Multipurpose Cooperative, to share with us his insights on the results of the PIDS studies. We will also hear from him firsthand the benefits of joining an ARBO, as well as the challenges his organization has faced and how they were able to overcome them. Marlon, maraming salamat at pinaunlakan mong aming imbitasyon. Narito ho siya ngayon sa aming opisina dahil mahina ang signal ng internet sa kanilang lugar sa Barangay Kalalan, sa bayan ng Pangil, Laguna. Uh, we have also invited a representative from the agency spearheading the Agrarian Reform Program. We are honored to have with us Department of Agrarian Reform Undersecretary for Foreign Assisted and Special Projects Office, Bernie Cruz. Yusek Bernie will share with us some updates on DAR's parcelization program and their other initiatives to assist agrarian reform beneficiaries in the country. Let me also take this opportunity to thank Converge, a joint project of the Philippine government led by DAR and the International Fund for Agricultural Development for funding the three studies. We hope that through this webinar, we will all gain a better understanding of the importance of land tenure security and agrarian reform beneficiary organizations in improving agricultural productivity and the welfare of farmers. Thank you and a good day to all. Thank you very much, Mamsel. Um, before we proceed to um, uh, the presentations, um, allow me uh, to just um, uh, read uh, the Jerry Pakturan uh, is, is with us and he is also representing IFAD um, um, as country program officer. Good to have you with us. Okay, um, so without much ado, let us now listen to the presentations which were called from studies conducted by PIDS on the Converge project, which is uh, being implemented by the Department of Agrarian Reform. And our first presenter, whose photo you can see on the screen, is uh, Ms. Ivory uh, Maika Galang, a Supervising Research Specialist at PIDS. And Ivory has been involved in economic modeling research projects and in re um, as well as in projects that evaluate agriculture-related government programs. Her other research interests include child labor and rural development. Ivory finished her master's degree in public policy at the University of Tokyo and as and she has an undergraduate degree in development studies from UP Manila. From 2017 to 2019, she was also a part-time instructor uh, at UP Manila, where she taught introductory statistics and economics. Ivory, the floor is now yours. Mm 
Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Ivory Galang mula sa PIDS. So, yung aking presentation for today, iikot siya sa usapin sa lupa at access sa credit ng mga magsasaka. So, sa loob ng 20 minutes, ibabahagi ko po yung findings o yung mga resulta ng dalawang policy studies na ginawa ng PIDS na kinomission po ng DAR or yung ating Department of Agrarian Reform uh, through their Project Converge na may funding rin po uh, mula sa International Fund for Agricultural Development or IFAD. So, sige, bago yung ano, actual presentation, mag-review muna tayo. Ano-ano ba yung mga kakailanganin ng uh, isang magsasaka para makapag-produce siya ng, let's say, ng palay o kaya isang uri ng gulay? So, ito yung ating simplified list yung mga kailanganin ng isang magsasaka. So, unang-una dyan, siyempre, kailangan niya ng lupang pagtataniman. Um, pwede yung kanya ito, uh, pagmamayari niya, o kung wala naman siya pagmamayari ng lupa, pwede yung nagre-renta lang siya. Um, kailangan niya ng binhi, uh, mga pesticides, mga uh, abono, pwede yung organic, kung yun yung gusto niya. Um, dapat meron ding magandang lagay ng panahon, at saka yung conditions ng lupa, uh, maayos din. Meron pa tubig, uh, may labor, um, and then, ito, mahalaga to. meron siyang working capital. Um, meron siyang pera um, na panggastos, pambili, pang, pambayad sa kanyang mga kakailanganin. So, pwedeng galing sa kanyang nakaraang um, kinita mula sa nakaraang anihan. Kung may savings siya, may kita siya before. Or kung wala naman, uh, pwedeng um, manggaling ito sa credit or utang. Um, bukod dyan, uh, kailangan nyo siyempre nakaalaman sa pagtatanim, tools and equipment. Um, meron din dapat siyang alam sa business side. Ibig sabihin, alam niya na kung paano palaguin yung kanyang investment na um, ginastos dun sa kanyang lupa. Um, meron din dapat siyang buyer uh, yung bibili ng kanyang ipoproduce. So, meron mga farming arrangements na yung buyer mismo ang magbigay ng pautang o di kaya uh, access sa technology. So, yung ating um, discussion for today, uh, ikot lang siya dito sa land tenure at sa credit. So, hindi po lahat ng ito ay madidiscuss natin for today. So, unahin natin yung land tenure. Ayan. So, yan yung um, topic ng unang policy paper. So, specifically, tungkol po siya sa parcelization ng collective CLOA yung uh, uh, Certificate of Land Ownership Awards. So, ibig po sabihin nito, um, isa subdivide yung mga collective CLOA into individual CLOAs. So, sa ilalim po ng CARP o yung Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program na nagsimula pa noong panahon ni dating Pangulong Corazon Aquino, sinasabi na ipapamahagi sa mga landless beneficiaries ang mga lupa ng gobyerno at yung mga malalaking hasyenda. Um, ang maximum na uh, size ng lupa na pwedeng uh, ariin ng isang beneficiary ay hanggang 3 hectares. At yung cloa nga, yan yung tawag, yan yung katibayan sa um, pagmamayari sa lupa ng mga beneficiaries. So, ideally, uh, individual CLOA si ipapamahagi ng DAR. Uh, pero yung mismong batas, yung CARP, kinikilala niya na may mga pagkakataon na hindi economically feasible na hatiin yung lupa at mas mainam na kooperatiba o uh, mga asosasyon ng farmers na lamang yung magmay-ari nito collectively. So, kaya siya tinatawag na collective CLOA. So, sa CLOA, uh, maraming pangalan ang nakalista. Sila yung mga co-owners nitong lupa. So, isipin natin kung yung lupa na pinag-uusapan ay hindi naman masyadong malaki. Tapos, madami yung mga beneficiaries na maghahati-hati doon. So, bawat beneficiary, uh, maliit yung area na pagtataniman. So, Ito yung sinabi na hindi economical o hindi nila masusulit yung gagastusin nilang investments uh, sa lupa kung, may sarili, kung magsasarili sila ng production. Um, isa ding dahilan kung bakit uh, madaming um, collective cloa 
uh, na ipinamahagi instead of um, inaka-individual na agad. Um, dahil na rin may hinahabol na deadline itong DAR kasi sabi ng batas, within 10 years dapat tapos na yung pamamahagi ng lupa. Um, pero dahil nga um, mahirap uh, at magastos yung proseso ng individual CLOA, um, mas uh, ma madali naman yung collective CLOA. So, mas yun yung ano, mas yun yung track na, na ginawa ng um, DAR. Pero nasa goal pa rin, um, gusto pa rin naman talaga eventually ng DAR na gawing individual CLOA, itong mga collective CLOA. Um, lalo yung mga hindi naman nagko-collective farming. So, base sa datos ng Philippine Statistics Authority para sa taong 2018, in terms of size, nangunguna yung Soxar Gen. So, 693,000 hectares na yung ipamahagi dun sa region na yun. So, katumbas yan ng 95% na kanilang goal. And then, next naman ay yung Eastern Visayas. 436,000 hectares na yung naipamahagi, katumbas ito ng 88% ng kanilang goal. And then, pangatlo yung Central Luzon, 434,000 hectares na yung naipamahagi. So, katumbas ng 96% ng kanilang goal. So, for the whole of the Philippines, 4.8 million hectares na yung naipamahagi. Out of 5.4 million hectares na total, so, katumbas ito ng 89%. Nasa 89% na yung accomplishment ng um, DAR. So, as of 2016, so medyo luma na yung ating datos, no? Um, 46% yung share o bahagdan ng collective CLOA. So, mas malaki pa din naman yung individual CLOA. So, over the years, no? na 46% pa din yung ating share ng collective CLOA. So, makita natin na malaki pa. Marami pa yung pwedeng gawing individual CLOA. Pero bakit ba natin gagawin yun? Bakit natin i-redistribute? -re gagawin natin individual CLOA, itong mga collective CLOA. So, marami kasing kinakaharap na problema yung mga farmers under the collective CLOA. So, um, alalaan natin na 1988 pa nagsimula yung CARP. Tapos, um, madami rin siyang naging issue, kaya na-extend siya, naging CARP extension, and then um, muling na-extend with reforms ng panahon ni dating Pangulong Arroyo. So, ang dami nang um, nangyari mula noon hanggang ngayon, 2021 na. So, maaari yung mga original um, beneficiaries na nakalista ay nangamatay na. Um, o kaya ipinamana na nila sa kanilang mga anak yung pag-aalaga sa lupa. Um, pero, hindi kasi malinaw, walang malinaw na delineation yung anong portion, gaano kalaki yung yung uh, pagmamay-ari ng bawat um, beneficiary doon sa collective CLOA. So, nagkakaroon sila ng conflict among them or mga hindi pagkakaunawaan. And then, um, dahil nga hindi malinaw ano yung pagmamay-ari nino, gaano kalaki, wala rin incentives yung ating farmers na magbayad ng tax and amortization. Sabi sa batas, dapat um, magbayad ng amortization yung mga beneficiaries within 30 years. And so, ang ginagawa ng DAR, um, kasalukuyan niyang ina-update yung mga beneficiaries list. May nagkakaroon siya na inclusion and exclusion. So, inaayos yung um, listahan ng mga beneficiaries. Pero ito, nagiging source nga din siya ng um, conflict. So, sabi sa uh, mga pag-aaral, itong uh, mga bansang ito, yung Peru, China, at Thailand, um, tumaas daw yung productivity at investment sa lupa ng mga farmers noong uh, nagsagawa ng individual land titling yung gobyerno nila. Noong naipamahagi yung mga malalaking um, lupa sa mga smallholders. So, paano naman sa Pilipinas? Ganon din ba ang, ang nangyayari? So, gamit yung datos ng Project Converge Baseline Survey na ginawa noong 2019, um, in-interview namin yung mga ARBO members. So, ARBO, ibig sabihin, Agrarian Reform Beneficiary Organization um, members. 
So they are composed of yung agrarian reform beneficiaries, meron ding other farmer beneficiaries, at may mga other rural workers. So in-interview namin sila and yung kanila mga household, inalam namin uh, ano yung mga, mga trabaho ng mga uh, members ng kanilang household, ano yung um, kita nila mula sa pagtatanim, pag-aalaga ng mga hayop, at mga iba pang impormasyon. So, pinagkumpara namin yung yield sa palay at mais ng mga parcels under individual cloa at mga parcels under um, collective cloa. At lumabas na mas mataas yung yield ng mga uh, under the individual cloa. So, dahil maliit lang yung sa sample namin, yung may mga cloa, um, hindi namin maaaring i-generalize o sabihin ganito yung totoong sitwasyon sa pangkalahatan. Um, Gayun pa man, um, sumusuporta itong findings ng policy study na to dun sa um, mga ibang policy, uh, ibang ibang studies kung saan sinasabi nila na nakakatulong sa uh, pag-enhance ng agricultural productivity yung pag individualize ng land ownership. Yan. So, ngayon naman, dumako tayo dun sa pangalawang policy study na ang topic natin ay credit. So, base sa datos ng PSA para sa taong 2018, nasa 502 billion pesos ang uh, halaga ng production loan na naibigay sa farmers and fisher folks. Uh, malaking bahagdan o malaking share na sa 81% ay nanggaling sa private banks and yung remaining 19% ay nanggaling naman sa government banks tulad ng Land Bank at yung Development Bank of the Philippines or DBP. So, of course, ginamit namin ulit yung data mula sa Project Converge. Um, sinuri namin kung gaano ba karami ang nangutang among the agricultural arbo households. So, ito yung um, uh, sa, sa, uh, sample size, 916 yung aming agricultural arbo households. Arbo households. So, uh, 39% sa kanila ang nagsabi na umutang sila mula noong uh, June 2018 hanggang May 2019. So, ito yung aming reference period. So, 72% ang nagsabi na mula sa formal sources yung kanilang inutang. Ibig sabihin, ang galing sa banko, kooperatiba, mga microfinance. Meron naman nagsabi na umutang sila sa mga informal sources tulad ng kanilang kamag-anak, kapitbahay, mga sari-sari store. Um, 10% naman nagsabi na both. Parehong formal and informal yung kanilang sources ng loan or credit. So, maaring marami kasi talaga silang sources ng utang at marami talaga silang utang during the reference period. So, ang sabi namin, sige po, um, yung pinakamalaking utang po ninyo, kanino po ninyo hiniram? So, base sa kanilang mga sagot, um, 37% ang um, nagsabi na sa microfinance institutions sila ng hiram. Um, and then, 26% o... Oh, um, ang nagsabi na galing sa cooperatives o farmers association, yung pinakamalaking loan nila. And then, 14% naman ang nagsabi na galing sa private banks, yung kanilang pinakamalaking inutang. So, may maliit din na porsyento na nagsabi na galing mismo sa government programs yung kanilang inutang. Um, pero malaga na malaman natin na marami sa mga government loans ay actually ipinapadaan sa mga cooperatives or farmers association. So, ginagawang conduits or daluyan ng mga pautang itong mga cooperatives and farmers association. So, bakit kaya? Bakit ginagawa pa silang bridge or conduit? So, isang malaking dahilan dito ay syempre, mas, mapa, mas mapapalapit sa mga uh, farmers or fisher folks yung access. Kasi nga, Um, um, kakilala nila itong mga co-ops and um, farmers association, yung mga leaders nila dito. Bukod pa dyan, meron tayong tinatawag na social capital. 
So, dahil kakilala nila yung isa't isa, um, medyo may hiya factor kapag hindi ka nakakabayad ng utang. So, isa yun sa ano, magandang um, advantage kapag through cooperatives and farmers association, ipapadaan yung mga utang. So, napakalaki ng potential nitong mga co-ops na to. Ah, lalo kung bibigyan pa sila ng more training, para mapaunlad yung ano yung kaalaman nila sa financial management and yung paghandle ng gantong mga credit. Bukod dyan, natuklasan din sa pag-aaral na ito na mas maraming um, nakakairam sa formal sector, kasama na dyan yung banks, among those households na may individual CLOA. So, 41% sa kanila ang nakakairam sa formal sources. Versus those households na walang pagmamayaring agricultural land. So, maaring itong mga households na ito, yung mga may individual kloa, pag marap sila sa bangko, um, meron na silang ano, uh, may maipapakita na collateral. Yun yung um, kloa nila. Nakita din natin sa pag-aaral na ito na um, yung mga agricultural households na nakahiram sa formal sources ay may net agricultural income na mas mataas. 25, uh, pesos, 25,000 pesos na mas mataas compared doon sa mga agricultural households na hindi nakahiram sa formal sources. So, ano bang sinasabi nito? So, nakikita natin na nakakatulong yung access sa credit para makapag-invest yung mga um, farmers dun sa kanilang mga kanikanyang lupa at uh, napapaganda yung production nila and syempre yung kita ng mga magsasaka. So, para sa panghuling um, salita, uh, nire-recommendan ng dalawang policy studies na, na discuss natin na mainam na ipagpatuloy ng gobyerno yung pag-subdivide ng mga collective growers para uh, magamit na ng mga farmers yung kanilang mga lupa, maiwasan ng mga conflict, at yun nga, mag magamit nila as collateral kung gusto nilang lumapit sa mga um, formal banks, kung, mag uh, kung maghiram sila ng loans, at isa pa, um, sana paigtingin pa ng gobyerno yung paggamit dito sa mga kooperatiba at mga farmers um, association bilang daluyan ng pautang conduits, gagawin silang conduits um, sa pamamagitan ng um, marami pang trainings, coaching, mga paggabay para uh, mas mahasa pa nila yung kanilang leadership skills, entrepreneurial skills, yung kanilang financial management skills. So, hanggang doon na lang po. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Thank you. Maraming salamat din sa iyo, Ivory. So, pinakita sa atin ni Ivory yung kahalagahan ng pagkakaroon ng individual na karapatan sa pagmamayari ng lupa. At uh, pati na rin yung uh, role o kahalagahan ng ating mga farmers associations, lalong-lalo na yung mga arbos, uh, to give farmers better access to credit and other support services. Our next presenter will tell us more about the role of ARBOs in the bigger context of agricultural value chains. And flash on the screen are the, are the um, authors of the study. Um, and to present the study is Dr. Um, Marife Ballesteros, the Vice President of PIDS. As a researcher, uh, Dr. Ballesteros has written and published papers on housing and land, and land policy, agri agrarian reform, rural finance, MSMEs and social enterprises. She has, she has also been involved in several impact evaluation studies. She is a member of the Society of Industrial and Organizational Economics and the International Development Evaluation Association. She earned her master's degree in economics at the UP School of Economics and her PhD in social sciences at the uh, Radboud uh, University of uh, Nimeyen, Nimeyen uh, the Netherlands. Um, Dr. Balisteros, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Sheila. I will share my uh, PowerPoint.
Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just as the previous study, this study was also done in collaboration with the DAR under the DAR Converge project. The, the Converge project was actually implemented in just uh, three uh, regions in Mindanao, but the, despite that, I think the findings and the recommendations of this study uh, is applicable to uh, other regions in the country. The, this study in particular addresses the following issues. First, is, is it important for small farmers to organize into arbos to participate in the value chain? And what types of arbos have access to the value chain? And how can we further strengthen arbos to enable them to have better access to higher value chain? Uh, the arbos or agrarian reform uh, beneficiary organization was established as a main strategy uh, under the uh, Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. And the objective is basically to empower agrarian reform beneficiaries and also serve as channels for the provision of support services from government and other agencies. So ARBOs have been organized nationwide and these are in areas where there is concentration of ARBs or where land distribution, there's there are a uh, concentration of lands distributed through the land reform program. So because it is uh, identified as agrarian reform cluster, it covers a wider uh, geographic area, meaning that um, it can have one or two barangays in one, in one cluster. And therefore there are non uh, agrarian beneficiaries that are also part of your ARPOS. Arbos are actually formal organizations because uh, they are registered as cooperatives with the Cooperative Development Authority or as Farmers Association, that including Irrigators Association, Women's Association, uh, registered either with the SEC or the uh, Department of Labor and Employment Bureau of Rural Workers. So as formal institutions or organizations, ibig sabihin, they can enter into contracts with both government and private institutions. So through the ARBOS, yung ARBs natin at saka yung mga small farmers can have access to the formal economy. If we look at the distributions of ARBOS nationwide, this is from the 20, uh, this is from DAR 2018 report. Uh, there are 5,201 operational ARBOS in 20, I think this is uh, 2017 data, although the survey was done in 2018. And it is concentrated in region three uh, and region 12. And that's expected because region three is actually one of the areas where uh, there's been um, significant progress in terms of the uh, achievements of, uh, of the land reform program. And we see less of that of Arbos in uh, region 4B, that's Palawan and the Arm. So how is this Arbos related to the value chain? The value chain refers to a series of uh, value adding activities from production to the end use of product or services. So I meron ako ipakita dito. This is a, a simple illustration of a value chain for for palai at nakita natin dito that um, value chain involves may mga linkages among actors along several activities or functions so yun yung uh, from the inputs to farming to post harvest to distribution uh, the role of the farmers is essentially nandun tayo sa farming no so yun yung pinaka sila yung main actors doon and uh, however, if we are able to organize farmers into cooperatives or organizations, they then they are able to consolidate their produce and assets together to be able to participate not only in production, but also post harvest activities. Because to have higher value on, on uh, palai, you have to um, go through a process of uh, drying it, peeling it, to, and uh, before you are able to trade and distribute it. So kung, kung with Arbos, 
uh, the possibility of, of moving further into the value chain and having direct access to consumers or even exporters is um, essentially made possible. So we can further understand the value of uh, Arbos when we look at high value crops, such as for instance, abaca, uh, in the case of abaca. So same with rice, small farmers are directly involved in the production phase. However, the production, uh, uh, in the case of abaca, you don't sell the leaves. You have to, you cannot directly trade that. So what you do is you need a primary uh, processing activities where you where you extract the fiber from uh, from abaca leaves, and that actually requires um, uh, equipment in order you, for you to be more efficient. Our diladon is uh, strippers rather than doing it manually. And in order for you to have higher price for that, kailangan hindi ma consolidate mo yon. You can uh, grade it. You can classify it before you are able to uh, uh, trade it uh, uh, sa mga traders or in the, in the market. So the farmer, farmer associations, or, so it, I thought just uh, to show you what are the equipment, basic equipment that has been uh, inve um, uh, purchased by uh, one of the uh, Arbos in, uh, involved in the Converge project. So you have warehouse, you have uh, uh, equipment for bowling, you have a stripper, the red one in the picture, and then you have a hauling truck. So this actually requires a large investment, which uh, individually the, the farmer doesn't have the capital for this. So by consolidation, by uh, uh, coming up with an organization, you're able to have access uh, to credit, you have better access to credit, you have uh, higher capital, you can, uh, uh, integrate your resources and be uh, be uh, have the uh, the be able to participate in the higher uh, value chain. So ganin din yan sa sugar uh, is the same thing, and just to give you a picture of what has been uh, the, the equipment and facilities that has in, been invested in to transform your product, yung coconut sap to cocoa sugar. So overall, young farmers, what we see now are the farmers are the major operators in the production activity. And to have a greater role in higher value chains, such as product transformation and marketing, and access to consumers market, farmers, especially smallholders, need to cooperate and organize themselves. Small farmers usually do not have the capital or facility and technology to carry out these processes. Thus, an arrangement such as Arbo will enable them to increase their capitalization, have economies of scale, lower the cost of doing business, uh, improve access to technology, information, and uh, credit, and innovate uh, production and marketing processes for higher value products. So, uh, what is the characteristic of Arbos with access to value chain? So, sino yung mga Arbos na nakaka-access sa value chain or participate in the value chain? So, based again, we, we did, uh, this is based on a case study of Arbos under the Dark Converge project. Um, yung Converge, actually a main strategy, so I, I already mentioned uh, that it is just implemented in regions 9, 10, and 13. And a main strategy of the Converge is to classify or identify tawag nila lead Arbos and participating Arbos. So yung lead Arbos, or they call it Larbos, these are the mature farmer organizations, usually cooperatives that have exhibited good financial standing and continuing operations in the medium to long term. Yung Parbos naman are organizations that have yet to accept organizational uh, and financial maturity. So the assumption here is that Larbos are assumed to have the access to the value chain and yung Parbos, uh, wala pa silang direct uh, access to the value chain, but DAR um, um, 
uh, implements a big brother scheme where the Arbos can bring the participating Arbos into the, the value chain. So what we did is to compare the characteristics of these two Arbos uh, using certain indicators. So Una, yung mga Arbos have, the DAR actually has, uh, which is a very good uh, innovation, has created a, uh, or developed a monitor monitoring system for Arbos in 2015. And this is known as the Information Technology Enabled Maturity Assessment or the ITEMA. So yung ITEMA na yan, um, it has several indicators and classified into organizational management of the Arbos, the resource management of Arbos, social enterprise and business operations, the financial performance, and alliance building and, and local responsibilities. So based on that, they come up with a, a single index, which they, they look at to compare the maturity of the Arbos across regions and um, all over uh, nationwide, no? So in our um, overall, actually only 30% of your Arbos, yung 5,200 Arbos na operational are considered uh, at high level maturity. And uh, in, uh, in the case study area, um, this is, uh, it's lower, but it actually represents uh, the situation also in other regions. Now, less than 30% are high, um, have high level maturity and the bulk or more than 50% of Arbos are under, are low, have low uh, maturity level. Okay, um, so, um, uh, to give an overview of the profile of the Larbos and the Parbos. So Larbos ito dat yung ating lead Arbos na tinatawag natin mature and they are those who participate, have the, the capacity to participate in the value chain. Um, if you look at the, the comparison, what you see uh, important issues here is that lahat ng Arbos are actually cooperative. Kasi yung, yung lead Arbos. Um, Kasi yung cooperative actually has is it's more uh, has more is, is, has more structure than just a farmers organization, and um, also there is a regulatory body that oversees the uh, the management of cooperatives. And in terms of capital build up uh, uh, program, all this the lead arbos have this in place compared to the, your parbos, your participating arbos, as sabi natin, weak parbos, arbos, na hindi lahat sila merong ganyan, capital build-up program, which is actually very important when you talk of uh, organizations. Kasi kung wala kang paid-up capital, wala kang ini initial uh, capitalization, how can you be an organization? So in addition, you have uh, a large or part of... Uh, large proportion of larbos also have a savings component compared to that of uh, the weaker arbos so looking at the the equity or paid up capital maliit lang talaga in terms ang paid up capital in our in cooperatives even for lead arbos and uh, as you see be wal be iba wala pa nga so uh, on the average parang um, Siguro mga 250 to 500,000 lang ang capitalization ng mga, even for lead Arbos, and of course much lower in the case of, of the weaker Arbos. And then if you look at the uh, fully paid, uh, yung proportion of members who pay their, fully pay their equity, this is a a also an indication of yung commitments no ng, ng members into the organization and uh, as you see here um, even within arbo lar, lead arbos which you consider as mature marami pa rin yung uh, there are about 10% who hasn't paid uh, fully their equity 
and uh, only 9% fully paid it. And on the average, siguro parang more than 50%, at least uh, paid more than 50% of, at least more than 50% of the, 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 the members paid, uh, fully paid their equity. And uh, of course, the situation is uh, much worse in the case of, of uh, the weak arpels. Ah, okay. Uh, another indicator is the organizational management of LARP, of uh, ARBOS, okay? So, uh, part of that is to look at merong bang written policy, systems, and procedure yung mga ARBOS. Do they hold organizational meetings? Do, they, do the members participate in, in the meetings? So, that is part of the, the indicators. And if you compare, if, and if you look at the organizational uh, management, even of lead, uh, agrarian reform uh, beneficiary organization, marami pa rin sa kanila yung hindi, uh, um, yung wala yung mga, walang mga written policies. And this is very important, especially if you, you, you want to look at the internal controls within, within the organization. Hindi rin regular yung mga meetings. But the situation is worst for the case of uh, the participating ARBO, where you have 56%, more than half, have no written uh, policies, systems, and procedures, and very rare uh, that they uh, have uh, meetings and participation of, of uh, their uh, members in uh, activities of the organization. Another indicator is uh, entrepreneurial activities. So uh, you would you would uh, see that uh, aside from just being involved in production, that usually lead arbos have more diversified income generating activities. And apparently, I think it's because of this diversified uh, active uh, income generating activities that they're able to provide some financial uh, stability even if yung uh, capitalization, initial capitalization uh, uh, or equity shares are not fully fully paid or kahit maliit, okay? So, yan. Um, and for for all the, and for all, um, and for all the lead arbos that were identified, at least they have six different types of financial um of entrepreneurial activities. In the case of your parbos or the participating, which we say are the weaker uh, agrarian uh, organizations, um, there's only about, uh, you see, diversified, just one or two types of entrepreneurial activity. So I, I hope we're able to get more indicators, but we were actually limited by by um, the data provided to us and it's also limited to only the, the areas that has been uh, covered by Converge. Anyway, so what we conclude from this uh, results is that farmers organizations such as Carbo serves as channels for small farmers to participate in higher value chain. And for Arbus to, to be able to do that, so you have to be functional and mature. And what characterizes mature arbos? They are formed as cooperatives. They have clear written policies, rules, systems, and procedures. They have active savings program. They have a capital and build up program for every member should be man is mandatory. They are engaged in more diversified uh, entrepreneurial activities, which is income generating and they're able to provide credit facility to members. And uh, we also observe that even among LARBOS or the lead or what we call as identified as a mature institution, sustainability will remain an issue. Because we still see weakness in the organizational management. Um, capital buildup program is slow which means it creates dependence on grants and it doesn't really show commitment of members to, to the organization. In fact, there were identified LARBOS at the start of the Converge project, which actually were dropped 
because uh, may mga organizational uh, issues and management issues. And so what do we, what are the recommendations? First, ARBOs have to be managed as professional organizations. Written and clear policies, rules, systems, kasi yun yung internal control mo eh. And then there should be an active participation of members, uh, attendance to meeting, election, committe commitment to, to collective projects. So if you are committed to supply this much of, uh, of product to, to the, to the co-op for consolidation that you should be able to commit to that. Then a uh, free rider problem should be avoided. Capital build up, as I said, initial capitalization is very important. Um, it, uh, there is, I, I think it's also very important that you have a mixed type of an organization, meaning na hindi lang lahat small farmers. Uh, the successful cooperative her have a, uh, a mixed um, um, type of membership wherein you have not, not everyone is needy or poor, but uh, you have, especially if you're an officer, um, so merong dapat din kakayahan yung ibang uh, members ng cooperative. And then capacity building, if government uh, provides capacity building programs, which is actually what uh, DAR is, is doing, you have to focus on ensuring that enterprise development for the farmers are, are, uh, are, the, fo are the, the out main outputs of this capacity building activities. And then I think it's very important to consider the adoption of new cooperative organizational models in terms of having mixed membership, as I mentioned, and flexibility of ownership rights. What do I mean by that? Because uh, very traditional yung, yung organizational structure of our cooperative. And I just want to show as my last slide a comparison of uh, some of the new forms or or new models of, of cooperative, um, which is actually a, um, uh, implemented or used in other uh, in other countries. Um, ito, ito lang yung medyo conservative pa nga ito because uh, if you look at ownership rights, you actually maintain the user ownership principle ng cooperative. But what you do is to relax some restrictions, especially in transferability and appreciability of yung, yung equity or yung shares ng member cooperative. So uh, also it's very important, you, only, you don't only have a base capital, yung sa equity share, but it will also be good to grow that investment in proportion to your patronage, meaning ano yung volume and quantity of your uh, uh, business that is being conducted. Um, second, uh, yung appreciability, this is also very important because in, like for instance, in a case of member investor cooperative, um, they're able to appreciate yung shares in terms of distribution of dividends, in terms of share value appreciation, it can be interest bearing, and sometimes it, uh, bonus uh, shares are given. So, so these are uh, uh, possibilities in which can be considered and uh, uh, to be able to strengthen your cooperative. You change, you have created some flexibility in terms of you, especially in the terms of ownership rights perspective. What we observe, uh, I, I think what we saw, um, this is probably just one, one case, sa, sa dami ng projects ng Converge in Mindanao, there's one case wherein we have a cooperative that's actually uh, has an, another entity that seeks capital. So the cooperative remains traditional, pero meron siyang outside equity from non-investors, which is uh, another company, which is different from, from your co co cooperative. So I think this is uh, something that we can uh, further study in, in the future. So thank you for your attention. And thank you to, and thank you to uh, Dr. Balisteros. You'll have the chance to uh, answer questions um, 
related to your presentation during the open forum. Okay, so to enrich our uh, discussion, so we invited two discussants who are not only familiar with the issues mentioned by our presenters, but they also have first-hand knowledge and experience of the realities on the ground. Our first discussant is none other than the Undersecretary for Foreign Assisted and Special Projects of the Department of Agrarian Reform. He is the Project Implementing Officer of the Support to par uh, Parcelization of Lands for Individual Titling, or SPLIP, uh, which is a project uh, that aims to uh, fast track and streamline processes as well as develop and enhance technologies and management systems involved in the subdivision or parcelization of collective certificates of land ownership awards. The development objective of the project split is the improvement of land tenure, security, and stabilization of the property rights of agrarian reform beneficiaries. We are very honored to have with us today Under Secretary Bernie F. Cruz, who will share with us DARS updates on its parcelization program and other related initiatives. Yusek Bernie, the floor is now yours. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Uh, everyone that uh, is on board. Well, on this... Uh, Slide number one, boosting agricultural productivity through parcelization of collective certificate of land ownership award. Okay, uh, we all know that uh, uh, in the Philippine setting, no? owning a land is a big boost to every farmers. Uh, matagal po sila na they are they are in the uh, what you call uh, bandage of the uh, the feudal feudal system no? but uh, in collective certificate of land uh, we can say uh, individual farmers and their families uh, cannot really uh, plan effectively on how to make uh, the land productive. Okay. So, so, slide number two, uh, the outline, okay, uh, insights on the discussion paper, okay, we will uh, give, give some comments, no? Uh, then the updates, parcelization activities of DAR, what will have what's happening there, and then further initiative. So this is our uh, this this is what I wanted to discuss. No, so slide number three. Yeah, on the findings, as I said, individual land ownership has positive impact on farmers' decision making, and then his her farming outcomes. Uh, we all know that. Uh, Farmers, as as a group, uh, you cannot you can uh, not not all not all the farmers uh, can be listened to. So there are times na it's only the leader who will decide, and so the individual farmers and their families uh, they cannot uh, decide on how to make the land more productive okay so what i mean is, is that, that uh, if uh, it's a collective ownership uh, the family the, the son the daughter if she or he is making money abroad cannot send money to his father or mother uh, for the productivity of the land because they cannot even tell what which part or uh, of the land uh, they own okay so that is why uh, parcelization is really important and besides it is in the in the law that uh, after giving the collective clover dar has to parcelize uh, the land 
finding number two. Okay. Favors the acceleration of the subdivision of collective PROAS. Uh, our current project split does support the fast tracking of the parcelization because we all believe, really, DAR and World Bank believe that the uh, land tenure uh, is uh, when you have uh, individual titles already. Because if uh, you are a member of a group which owns a collective GLOA and something happens to you, and then your family, uh, there is a process. There are, there are certain processes that you need to undergo before uh, you can claim or if there is uh, uh, no de decision from the family who amongst the uh, children or, or uh, the siblings will, will get the inheritance no uh, it's it's very, really very hard because uh, it, it is a uh, collective global okay finding number three while parcelization is being pursued other rural development strategies such as farm consolidation could also be undertaken yes uh, we are uh, pushing for this actually uh, you know uh, uh, 30 years, 34, 35 years ago, when we started the uh, CARP under Korea administration, uh, Philippines is really one of the uh, countries ahead in the agricultural sector. Uh, in fact, we are exporting different uh, products, no? farm products, uh, like uh, sugar they are exporting a lot before but now 34 years or 35 years after we cannot even uh, feed our farmers okay our our citizens okay the reason for that is that more than 4 million hectares has been distributed and much of these are commercial farms before it is a social justice thing but uh, we forgot that uh, commercial quantities is needed to feed our citizens so subsistence farming is a thing of the past that's why we need uh, uh, consolidation of farms to make commercial uh, production because uh, most of the land that we we have uh, distributed are haciendas formerly producing commercial quantities of uh, product and then uh, we we distributed it individually okay uh, the farmer will leave if you give him uh, less than three hectares or three hectares uh, he will he can feed his family uh, he can earn much to, to have his uh, children go to school everything but the, the, the commercial uh, production was broken down so that's a that's a part of it now we need to uh, consolidate, but we don't need, uh, we, we can consolidate without uh, getting it from the farmers. We have to include them, uh, but in, in commercial production. Uh, what is uh, lacking now is the capital, uh, the management skills and everything. And magtatalon po ako, no? This is what, uh, IFAD has been doing. We have, uh, we have a project, the Converge, in uh, Mindanao, where we are uh, transforming our individual farmers into an uh, entrepreneur, into a 
or business like group that will undergo certain development with with not only uh, producing crops but with value added uh, productivity so that's uh, findings number 3 In finding number 4 adopt a modern calendar and record keeping system and to improve agrarian justice delivery system of DAR. In project split, we have set our, uh, out to develop a CLOA document management system aimed to integrate technologies and processes to facilitate a, stream, a streamlined land distribution and tightening process. Not only for uh, DAR, no, the, the CLOA, but also all, all these uh, title, titling agencies. Uh, there are four titling agencies which we, uh, we intend to integrate. No? Uh, the LRA, the DNR, NCIP, and DAR. Most of the time, kasi, uh, the survey, no? they are using different, uh, different kind of... Uh, instruments, different kind of uh, technologies in processing all these uh, records and documents. So we are uh, in the project split, we are integrating uh, all, all of this and adopt a modern uh, record keeping system. Okay, so slide number four. Uh, insights on key findings. In all these key findings, uh, it's a complementary to DARS parcelization program. It echoes the project development objective of our current project with the World Bank. Uh, it supports the parcelization of land individual titling project. We appreciate such such studies, and uh, we are more uh, more confident in our uh, initiatives in our uh, project implementation uh, with the help of uh, groups like uh, PIDS. These kinds of studies. No? Okay. So slide number five. Interestingly, based on the PR, PSRTI survey, the average farm income of collective ARBs amounting to 140 was higher than that of the individual ARBs, which was 101. As I said a while ago, uh, uh, subsistence farming as against commercial farming, uh, maybe uh, this study is uh, not really on because there are collective uh, farms, uh, especially in Mindanao, which are planted with bananas and pineapple. But these are uh, collective uh, farms, which is being managed through ABA, uh, agri-venture agreements with uh, different uh, corporations like Dole and other, other big multinationals. No? That's why, Maybe in the in the study uh, they earn more because, as I said, there is uh, R and D. This is what is lacking: uh, R and D, research and development, uh, capital, and management. Okay, so in the individual ARBs, uh, they themselves, they themselves are, are the ones uh, doing all these things. But uh, as I said a while ago, there is a need to uh, uh, to after after parcelization, there is a need to uh, to group them together uh, and uh, make them uh, produce like a commercial farm. Uh, 
so so that's that's uh, what we intend to do after or even during the uh, implementation of the project split okay okay so number uh, slide number slide number six six na ba? <coughs> Parcelization activities of DAR. Okay, uh, it's our first first year of implementation. Uh, project split is being uh, funded by uh, our partner World Bank. Uh, it's our first year of uh, implementation. And uh, there are three regions actually. Also, we are we are doing pilot pilot uh, areas. Region one, region eight, and region nine. Okay. Uh, as of now, we are doing uh, we are doing good. Uh, we have uh, at least uh, the the. You call this. Uh, we have sta we have uh, identified identified uh, the uh, uh, collective clovers. Uh, identified the uh, project uh, the problems at hand. How to go about the, uh, about them, and we we have recorded uh, the experiences that our uh, teams you know, the split teams uh, who are are going in the ground despite the pandemic you know, hardships because there are areas uh, where where lockdowns are being uh, observed you know? but we are uh, as we can say we we are still uh, Doing good, no? despite the the problems the, at hand. Okay, slide number slide number seven. Okay, okay. Uh, further initiative. As I said a while ago, uh, many are confused no? uh, because of the project split we parcelized uh, into individual titles from collective clovers but we have initiatives or we are uh, developing programs uh, in consolidating uh, this land as i am saying a while ago we are uh, submitting uh, projects like mega farm and ipap projects concept this these projects uh, intend to to have all these farmers uh, consolidate uh, farmlands of a minimum of 50 hectares to be more competitive we will be uh, the, the inputs like uh, management r d and uh, capital. Uh, these are the needed one that we are trying to uh, to be in partner with our farmers, but not necessarily. Uh, no, not, it's not. Um, I think uh, you said Bernie lost his connection. Uh, Gwen? Yes, probably. But I already turned off his video. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So hopefully we'll he will be able to come yeah. back. Yes. Okay. 
You need all working? these uh, uh, components. No? Hello. Yes. Yes, Hello. sir. Uh, uh, yes. It's time. Connected. Okay, so. No, no, sir. It's okay. Continue, sir. You can continue, uh, sir. You just lost your connection for a while. This is the last slide. Okay. okay. <laughs> Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Anyway, this is the last uh, last uh, slide. I just wanted to emphasize on the on our uh, effort to make all this land productive uh, mm -hmm. on a commodity rather than subsistence farming, so that the whole nation approach can be observed without getting the lands from our, but uh, uh, doing it together with them. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope I, I have uh, given uh, my, my time a, a good a good one. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Bernie. We hope we hope you could join join us for the um, to answer questions uh, in the open forum. So uh, we greatly appreciate sir your comments as well as uh, your updates on on what um, uh, Dar is doing. Okay. Uh, with regard to it to the uh, parcelization program okay so friends um our uh, webinar today would not be complete if we won't hear from um, our farmers so at um sa sa hapon pong ito no uh, mapalad po tayo na makakasama natin ngayon ang isang uh, farmer leader mula sa Pangilaguna at ibabahagi niya po sa atin ang karanasan ng kanyang organisasyon na isang agrarian reform beneficiary organization o ARBO. I am honored to introduce to all of you Mr. Marlon Talavera, the current chairperson of the Galalan uh, Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries uh, Multipurpose Cooperative. He is also the manager of uh, the Aquila Stars Agricultural Service in Pangi Laguna. Uh, and he has also served as technical consultant to various companies offering agricultural products and services. Prior to this, he worked as an agricultural technologist at the Municipal Agriculture Office of Pangil from 1999 to 2013, where he facilitated the implementation of the local government's agricultural programs for rice, livestock, vegetables, and aquaculture. He was recognized as an outstanding Philippine organic agriculturist, agriculturist in 2012. Um, Marlon, Mr. Marlon Talavera, the floor is now yours. Thank you, po. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for a very uh, unacceptable ano, introduction. Medyo masyadong, ano po, medyo masyadong nakakayaan. <laughs> Ganun kalaki. Anyway, uh, sa ngayon po, uh, ako po ay magbibigay lang ng aking komento. At saka, uh, actual na karanasan, bahala po sa pagpapadakbo ng ating, ano, ng aming kooperatiba sa Pangilaguna. Uh, base po doon sa ating uh, parcelization of land kasi meron po tayong area doon sa Pangil na nabigay din po ng DAR. That's why we called our organization as Agrarian Reform Beneficiary Multipurpose Cooperative. Uh, most of the farmers are given 3, uh, three hectares of land. But it's sad to say na this is really happening on the ground. <clears throat> yung pong ibang magsasaka natin ay talaga pong walang kakayahan na mag-develop ng lupa. Uh, sa ngayon po kasi ay lumalabas po na parcel of their land ay binibenta po sa mga may capital para po makakuha din sila ng kanilang capital para sa pag-develop ng kanilang sariling lupa. Uh, chances na ganun po nangyayari. So the land Ang uh, nangyayari sa bandang huli po ay sila na lang po yung tauhan o sila na lang po yung worker ng mga nakabili po ng lupa dun sa area po ng uh, galala na na po. Pero marami pa rin po yung mga farmer namin dun na nagtatanim. Uh, tatanim po kami dun ng gulay 
kung ano po yung gulay na tinatanim sa Baguio, ayun din po ang tinatanim namin sa aming lugar sapagkat ito po ay 540 uh, meters above sea level. So, doon po pumapasok yung importansya ng pagkakaroon ng arbos. Kasi po doon sa kapitalisasyon, medyo doon po nahihirapan yung ating mga magsasaka. So, kailangan-kailangan po yung arbos na nandun para po doon po sila lumapit at magkaroon po ng access sa mga credit uh, pasi Uh, credit institution like banks and saka other uh, financial institutions. Gayun din po, nakakahingi din po sila ng, ng assistance doon po sa sa mismong sa Arbos. Kasi yung pong ibang uh, farmers namin na naging membro, nag-invest po sa cooperative din, doon din po sila kumukuha ng kanilang capital. Then yung pagkakaroon po ng Arbos talaga po isang importante kasi Mabilis po yung access, isa lang po yung kausap ng mga agencies, uh, isa lang po yung uh, nilalapitan ng mga funding institution para po uh, yung, yung karamihan po ng mga membro hindi na po kinakailangan na lumapit pa sa bangko ng individually. So yun po, uh, tama po yung sinasabi nila na ito po ay nagiging access uh, conduit po para po dun sa kapitalisasyon ng ating mga magsasaka. Sa ngayon po, yung amin cooperative po ay tumutulong at nagbibigay kapital sa ating mga magsasaka sa pamamagitan din po ng uh, programa ng DAR. Meron po tayong nakuhang programa doon po sa ERI's program ng DAR ngayon na uh, kung saan po yung kapitalisasyon po na hiniram sa bangko ng mababang uh, interes ay pinapahiram din po sa ating mga magsasaka sa mababang interes. Ang kahalaga ang ka Importantehan po nito ay nagkaroon po yung ating mga farmer members ng pag-asa na magkaroon po ng kapital na, na nasa mababang interest lang po na binibigay po uh, ng cooperative sa kanila. Uh, pagkatapos po nun, ang cooperative din po ang linkage nila sa marketing. Ang mga official po ng cooperative siya po ang nakikipag-usap sa mga marketing uh, institutions. Like kagaya po ng aming mga tinatanim na gulay ay for salad and vegetable na kung saan po ito pinuproduce po ng ligtas at wala pong ginagamit na chemical sa pagpapalaki ng aming mga halaman. Kung kaya po kami po ay nakikipag-compete, ngunit sa ngayon po tanggapin po natin hindi po pwedeng sumabay ang presyo doon po sa organic at saka inorganic production. Sapagkat hindi po lingid sa inyo na ang, lagi po ang gulay sa Baguio ay napakamura. Hindi po katulad ng gulay namin sa Laguna na mas, mas, ma, mas mahal po ng konti kaysa sa Baguio. Gayun pa man, uh, ito po ay malaking tulong sapagkat kami po ay hindi gumagamit ng kahit anong chemical na makakasira po sa ating kalusugan. Isa po po, ito pong mga challenges naming naharap ay... Marami po bago po naging maayos ang takbo. Sa ngayon po ay ang challenges, wala po tayo kami po ay nagkakaroon ng problema sa mga uh, komunikasyon. Sapagkat ang lugar po namin ay walong kilometro mula sa bayan, wala po siyang komunikasyon. Walang tower, walang cellphone, walang cellphone signal kung kaya kailangan pong umakit ka po sa isang gulod para po magkaroon ka ng text or, me or messages na makuha mo. Uh, yun pong dun sa split program ni Sir uh, Bernie uh, nakita, ano ko po yung kanyang sinabi kanina yung sa support parcelization lands of individual titling meron din po kasi kami dun uh, around 600 hectares na collective cloa pa po ngayon po yung mga tao po ay talagang nawawala po sa kanilang sarili o nagkakagulo kasi hindi po nila alam kung saan po yung kanilang lupa. So ngayon nagkakaroon po ng problema kasi hindi pa po siya na-individualized at saka nagkakaroon pa po ng uh, overlapping sa survey. So hindi pa po namin malaman kung ano pa po yung gagawin. Gayun pa man po, yung pong mga tao kasi po doon ay nagnanais na mag-membro at maging membro ng cooperative. Kaya lang po ay hindi pa po namin sila makumbinsi sapagkat 
ayun uh, nga po, nagkakaproblema sila sa mga titulo nila ng lupa. Uh, ngayon po ay meron po kaming mga proyektong pinapatupad. Meron po kaming uh, assistance na nanggaling po kasi po doon sa COVID-19 pandemic assistance po na program. From there din po, meron din po kaming poultry production na kung saan po yung aming pong mga broilers ay pinuproduce po sa pamamagitan lang po ng household. <clears throat> 100 heads per household po siya. At continuous po, 500 heads every week. Na malaki po ang naitutulong para po doon sa maka, makasapat, makatulong sa kanilang uh, pang-araw-araw na panggastos. So, ito po yung isa pa pong nagiging problema at naging challenge sa amin kasi wala po kami uh, hindi lang naman po ito dito sa cooperative namin ano po. Ito po ay siguro po sa ibang lugar din po sa Laguna na ang problema po ay yung mga second liners. Second liners ng mga officers kasi yung iba po uh, hindi na po tayo nakaka-develop ng ibang mga membro na pwede pong mag-assist in the long run. Kasi po, tumatanda na po si, si mga unang official so dapat po may dinedevelop tayong second liners. Isa pa po yung uh, accounting and uh, submission ng reports po sa mga government agencies. Yung sa reports lang po sa CDA, napakadami po nun. So, medyo nahihirapan po yung ating mga cooperative, lalo na po yung mga cooperative sa Laguna. <clears throat> Kasi ito po ay Sabagay, ang, ang pagsasamit po kasi ng report sa CDA ay talaga pong napakadaming dadaanan bago po siya matapos. Yun po yung mga challenges namin. Pero paano po namin ito na solusyonan? Yung sa dami po ng training na kinandak po, una po ng DAR, uh, doon sa Converge Project na po ay nagkandak po ng maraming training. Uh, meron po tayong business school, farm business school na kinandak doon para po yung ating mga magsasaka ay hindi po maging, hindi po siya maging isang uh, trabaho, ito po yung maging passion at maging isang negosyo. Kasi ang, agricultural, uh, ang agriculture po, base po sa akin, sa akin pong karanasan at sa akin pong experiences, ang agriculture po ay dapat po ay may uh, science, business and art. Yung pong science na sinasabi natin na patuloy pong pagtuklas ng mga bagong teknolohiya at mga bagong pamamaraan para po mapaunlad natin yung ating agricultural production sa ating pong uh, lugar. At saka po yung business, dapat po may business talaga kasi ang ating pong uh, sustainability po ng farm operation, kung wala po siyang business side, hindi po siya magaganap kung walang uh, business side yung pong negosyo. Uh, meron din po siya yung sa art po naman, dapat po pag mag-engage po tayo sa agriculture ay dapat po may art kasi yung pag nakita po yung farm nyo na pangit, eh di hindi po siya kaya-aya sa ating mga uh, makakakita and then sa ating mga bisita. So, agriculture, science and business. Pero ang pinaka-importante po doon ay magkaroon po ng business side ang agriculture. Yung pong ginagawa namin ngayon, so kami po yung nakikipag-tie up sa mga... Uh, institutional market like organic option, healthy option, Laguna Organic and Farm Products. Yun po yung mga kumukuha ng produkto. Ngunit ito po ay naapektuhan din po ng uh, pandemic. Sa ngayon po ay halos sarado na po yung ibang kumpanya na pinagdadala namin ng gulay. Kaya po ngayon ay meron po kaming marketing problem. Uh, ngayon din po sa sitwasyon ngayon, tambak po yung aming mga produkto doon na kalabasa, siling, manghang, ay hindi po namin sila maibenta sa lugar sapagkat isa pong problema doon sa lugar ay napakalayo at tapos malulugi pa po doon sa logistics cost lang. Ang cost po sa bayan ay 10 piso lang ang kalabasa so kung ito po isasakay nyo pa sa kabayo, 2 piso ay di 8 na lang po, tapos isasakay nyo pa po sa tricycle na 150 pesos. So, yun po yung ano, yun pong hindi po siya marketable kung pagbabasihan po yung presyo ngayon. So, 
Ang challenges pa po din ngayon, yung isa pa po, yung ating mga darating na tag-ulan po, uh, sa aming karanasan po, every bare months po, mayroong problema tayo sa lakas ng ulan, sa lakas ng hangin. Pero ito po naman ay nasusolusyonan po natin sa pamagitan po ng paghingi po ng tulong sa Department of Agriculture para po doon sa ating mga rain shelters, uh, ating mga greenhouses, na kung saan po ito na po yung sagot sa ating uh, pagkakaroon ng uh, pagbabago ng panahon. Anyway, yun po lang ang aking may share and then kung may mga tanong po at nais pong mag uh, ano, sa, pwede po naman kami sumagot sa open forum. Thank you po. Uh, maraming salamat Marlon. Napakaganda din yung mga sinabi. Ano? So, may mga katanungan para, uh, mamaya para sa iyo. So, uh, Uh, during the open forum, uh, magkakaroon pa tayo ng uh, mas, uh, um, mas deeper na talakayan tungkol dun sa mga sinabi mo at senior ng ating ibang mga speakers. Okay, so uh, before we proceed to the question and answer uh, section sa ating open forum, let's give our speakers a break before they start uh, Um, answering uh, questions. No? So let's have a poll. And our uh, question for this week is from the presentation of Dr. Balisteros about our boss. So you can see our question on the screen. So it is about uh, the region uh, that has the most number of operational arbos. Sana nat natatandaan pa yun. So is it A, Region 2 or Cagayan Valley? B, Region 3 or Central Luzon? And or C region 5 or the call region. Okay, so please um, key in your answer now. Gwen, uh, please uh, help me out. Uh, we, we need to give them only 10 seconds. So let me know if the 10 seconds is over. Please key in your answer now. Copy. So which region, okay, which region has the most number of operational arbos? Region 2, region 3, or region 5? Okay. Mm -hmm. When? Time's up, Ma'am Sheila. Oh, time's up. Okay, and can you please, uh, okay, can you process the uh, answer now? So, I think you need, uh, WebEx needs uh, at least 20 seconds. Tama ba? Yes, uh, just 10, 10 more seconds. Okay, just 10 more seconds according to our platform host. Okay, I hope. Um, All right, here you go. Okay. Okay, the correct answer is region 3, okay, and 44 got it right, okay, so region 3 has the most number of operational arbos. So those who answered correctly automatically qualify in our draw for this week. So what we will do is we will pick three names and each of them will receive a PIDS notebook. And I will announce uh, the three names before we close our webinar, okay? So at this point, I now invite our um, speakers uh, uh, to answer questions from our uh, participants. So by the way, those who are watching us on Facebook are welcome to join in the open forum. Kaming mga katanungan po kayo, just uh, use the uh, comment section of Facebook. Okay, um, questions here. Let me um, go to questions related to the presentation. Let me start with... Um, a question for Ivory. Um, Ivory, this is from Nova Nguyen. I think you, she wants some clarification. She will also wants your, you know, to get your, your feedback because in one of your slides, you mentioned that, um, okay, um, agricultural households at the, that were able to borrow, to borrow from formal sources were able to a generate a net, net agri income of, uh, I think, 25,000 pesos. And he wants to know your, um, you know, your, your viewpoint on this because she said, is it possible that they were given access to credit because of their capability to earn 25,000 and not the other way around? Hindi kaya daw ganon? I yes, ma'am, Sheila. Um, to respond to that question, no, um, in our study, uh, we just focused on the correlational na patterns. So we were not able to really establish um, yung direction ng relationship ng credit and yung um, change in uh, agri-income. 
So, it's possible dahil nga hindi na hindi na na-establish yung ganung klasing causal uh, relationship na posible nga binibigyan ng priority yung mga mas profitable na farmers kaya din sila yung binibigyan ng ano credit. So, that's possible po. Okay. Thank you very much for that Ivory. Okay. Um let me jump to uh, some questions here for uh, Dr. Ballesteros. Uh, and this one is from Raymond Tejano. Um, Ma'am Peng, um, Raymond is interested to know if um, some sort, some kind of certification is being done by agencies such as DAR, CDA, or the LGU for ARBOS with regard to uh, systems or processes, let's say, if they have mature systems, then they can be considered as mature arbos. Meron bang ganung ano, certification process? If in case, uh, uh, actually, she, uh, yeah. Hello, thank you for that question. Um, I don't, uh, I don't um, have an idea if there's a certification process on those specific. I don't know. Uh, yung details. Kasi mm -hmm. ang DAR, uh, basically, uh, is the one that ad addresses, kasi sila yung may monitoring system. Mm -hmm. So, they, they may basis actually why they should uh, uh, consider an organizational uh, setup as uh, they give a score, mm -hmm. but they don't certify it. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you for that clarification, Man Peng. I wanted to ask you, Sek Bernie. Uh, however, um, he sent a private uh, message to all the panelists saying that he's al already on his way uh, back to Manila and, and he is having connectivity problems now. But he will try to uh, try his best to answer via chat. And also, if there is someone among the or some officials among our participants who are from DAR, pwede rin po kayong uh, uh, mag, mag, uh, mag respond um, dito sa aming uh, open forum. If you have something to share, just use our chat box. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, okay. Peng, I think this is also for you because uh, you mentioned uh, examples of some uh, cooperatives, some arbos in your study. And Ed Edgardo Luzano wants to know, um, you know, the agriculture value chain projects undertaken by the arbos and what is the business model involved and how does it perform? I think you, in your presentation, you mentioned two cooperatives, yung San Isidro upper farmers multi-purpose co-op uh, which is in Agusan and then the Linabu Agri Agrarian Multi-Purpose uh, Cooperative in Misamis Oriental. Uh, would you have um, you know some details to share? Oh okay thank you for the question. Yeah actually the San Isidro Upper Farmers multi Purpose Cooperative. That's one of the successful uh, mm -hmm. uh, projects and uh, value chain um, ac activity under the Converge. Uh, we are uh, actually this. The paper mainly looks at the role of Arbos, no, uh, mm -hmm. the impact and the benefits uh, of from that project itself is actually uh, going to be um, uh, the the is still in the process of be of you know, of a study. Actually, okay. this will be may impact evaluation kasi eh, no oh. mga projects na yan. So from that impact evaluation, which looks at both the quantitative and qualitative uh, aspect, no mga projects tsaka nung value chain, doon mo makikita yung mga details of that, of, for each of the, the ARPOs. Uh, but uh, what I can say is, um, Hindi, may mga issues pa rin coming from, even from the lead arbos in terms mm -hmm. of how we're able to access uh, the value chain. Yung pinakita ko are just some of the successful ones. But even in the the, the in type of investments and facilities, meron ng mga, may mga issues then. And I, I, that will be taken up more in the, in the study on the impact evaluation for the project itself. Thank you very much, Peng. 
We have um, a question here. This one is actually for you, Sik Bernie. So, you, Sik Bernie, uh, you said you can respond via chat just in case you have the opportunity. Uh, from uh, Masaganan Sakahan Director Daniel Agustin, uh, he's uh, interested to know interested to know about um, the uh, agrarian reform program in Barm. Uh, I think uh, if Kung tama ako, BARM has its own uh, ministry and the Department of Agrarian Reform has turned over its functions and powers to the newly established Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Agrarian Reform uh, or MAFAR. No? Sir, baka meron kayong, in, in case you have um, uh, some details to share about uh, the Agrarian Reform Program in, in BARM, sir, um, just um, you may, you may uh, send your response via chat. Okay. And in case you can still connect with us uh, dito sa ano, kahit, kahit voice or okay lang. Okay. So, let us uh, jump to other questions. And, okay. Mm, what are, from Oli Lucas, what are the reasons for low capital buildup and other issues that impact stunted maturity of Arbos? Meron kang nakitang ganitong ano, uh, peng? Yeah, ah, in, reasons. In, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, low capital yeah. build up. Mm. Kasi uh, actually, it's when you have co cooperatives na ganito in any organization, yung issue of trust is very important, no? So mm -hmm. even if, uh, if it's a requirement that you have this equity uh, or paid up capital initially from the organization, Oh uh, well, one could be um, the farm. The farmer is really does not have really that capital, no. But uh, sabi ko nga kanina, that's why there can, can be have some form of flexibility. Kasi pwede namang mm. produce part. Mm -hmm. You can build up the capital through a portion of the produce that you deliver to the cooperative. Pwede ganon. So there are several ways of doing it. So yung issue kasi of the others is of the trust will have play a very big role. Kasi hindi lang yung what will uh, enable a, a farmer or a member to further increase yung capitalization niya doon. Mm -hmm. So it's really uh, over time yan. You, 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 you build up trust kasi not at one time, eh, but over time. And if mm -hmm. you look at uh, studies of several uh, cooperatives, hindi yung sanctioning. It's not the sanctioning that really creates more cooperation, but it's really the reciprocity, yung interdependence, meaning na, na nakikita over repeated transactions, na, na, na be built yung trust, na nakikita mo that the organization is doing something. And also the member is reciprocating what uh, yung mga benefits in terms of cooperation. So parang you build it up through time. So unless mm -hmm. hindi makita yun, mahirap talagang uh, to create some kind of, uh, of uh, unless, unless wala yun, it's difficult to really just put in your money to something mm -hmm. that you don't know but, uh, how it will be used. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Balisteros. Siguro maganda uh, pakinggan rin natin yung ano. You, si Marlon, ano, experience nila sa uh, kanilang cooperative, no? kung paano nila nasus kung paano nila na-increase yung capitalization, Marlon, at paano nila na, na panatili yung trust na, yun, na sinasabi ni Dr. Ballesteros. Marlon? Well, well ano po, uh, ang ginawa lang po namin ay regular na pakikipag-usap sa mga membro, uh, regular pong nakikipagkita uh, at saka regular meeting po every month. And then, uh, nakikipag, parang ang harmonious relationship po sa mga membro, doon nakikreate yung trust and then mm -hmm. dapat wala silang makita na na may ginagawa kang kalokohan doon sa cooperative or transparency ng mga records, transparency ng, ng transaction, yun lang po yung naging sekreto namin para po mapataas yung capitalization namin. Okay. Ivory, I, I, I see you nodding your head. Any, any thoughts that you would like to share with us on this topic? Yes, ma'am. Um, actually, madami pa sa ating mga farmers yung hindi pa talaga um uh, nagme-member sa ating mga cooperatives or mga farmers association so marami pa yung kailangan natin i-convince so paano mm. natin sila mako-convince yun nga yung sinabi ni Sir Marlon 
we need to um, make sure na credible itong ating mga organizations by being transparent. Wala mm -hmm. yung pag nagpasok ng pera si farmer, biglang malulusaw na pala yung samahan. So, maganda po na nasabi yan ni Sir Marlo na posible na magkaroon tayo ng mga credible na mga organizations. And yun po yung kailangan nating uh, i-enhance sa rural areas. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have um, some questions here related to farm consolidation, and this was brought up by Edgardo Lozano. Uh, he said, farm consolidation is a mechanism to bring back economies of scale in subdivided lands. One example of this is compact far the com compact farming concept. Um, he is uh, asking for recommendations on, on how to achieve or how to successfully achieve farm consolidation. And this was also uh, a re um, related lady. Was, this was also brought up by uh, Mr. Alessandro Marini from, from iPad. I, um, he is uh, asking if we could unpack the concept of uh, consolidation. How, how can we uh, uh, implement it? Uh, Ma'am Peng, uh, Dr. Ballesteros, would you like to, um, to respond to this? And then we can go to Ivory also. Um, can I go, Ivory go first? Yeah, I, sure, I, I no problem. Quite, uh, yeah. uh -uh. I didn't quite get the question, Sige. Uh -uh. Uh. Ivory, did you did you uh, hear yes. my the question, Sige? Yung sa farm consolidation. Any yes, thoughts um, on how we, this can be carried out? Uh, unfortunately, in our policy study, we're not able to discuss in further detail uh, the issue on um, farm consolidation. So as mentioned by our, ano, um, the one who asked the question, uh, there are many ways to consolidate um, at the farm level. So um, I think uh, it, it depends on the strategies that either DAR and or um, DA will take. Currently, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's already part of DA's priority, po, yung farm consolidation. And uh, it has branches, it has different kinds. So, I think they will pursue different modes of farm consolidation. Okay. okay. Uh, Shira, may I add to that? Sure, sure. Yeah, Go ahead, uh, thanks. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as as mentioned by, by Ivory, there are several ways of uh, consolidation. No? It can be at the farm level. Yung nga yung I think she's mentioning block, may block farming, may compact mm. farming, may contract growing arrangements. Contract growing. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, uh, and organizations like Arbus is also one way of consolidation. Hindi lang siya on the production, but mm -hmm. at least consolidation of your, uh, of your uh, consolidation in a sense na, na you're able to uh, apply economies of scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very I may much. add, ma'am. Yes. Um, I think na mentioned din Sir Alessandro earlier that um, oh, merong milder version yung consolidation mm -hmm. yun yung at the arbo organizational level, level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also important to consolidate even at the farm level because we need to increase yung price margin at the farm level. So, starting from that point po, para mas maganda yung presyo ng mga products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Ivory and uh, Peng. Okay, um, let me just read this uh, important point uh, shared by uh, Mr. Alessandro uh, Marini of IPAD. And it, this is about the risk, risk of land parcelization. He said, we all agree that land parcelization is one step in the right direction. But if not accompanied by access to other key services such as capital, credit technologies, and markets uh, and, and inputs, there is a risk of individual farmers ending up selling their land because they cannot exploit its full productive um, and economic potential. The experience of Converse shows that small farmers with access to proper services through well-managed cooperatives can be as productive and commercial oriented as large estate farms. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, input, uh, Mr. Marini of IFAD. 
Okay, let's go to other questions from our audience. And we have here, um, okay, um, from the same, from Oli Lucas, I, this is also from Oli Lucas. Would you propose to DAR or to DA to finance professionalization of our books? Um, kasi they have programs, ano, um, wherein they provide training or they pro provide capacity building. So I, I, I think that they are already doing this at the moment, you know, and, and these are meant to professionalize our books. Ivory, I saw you nod, nodding your head. Yes, ma'am. Um, it depends on the definition of professionalization, but certainly mm -hmm. we need to capacitate our arbos Arbo. for them mm -hmm. to increase their credibility, their legitimacy mm -hmm. po, and other um, um, skills ng ating mga arbo leaders and members. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Ivory. Um, Dr. Balisteros, would you like to add anything? In terms of uh, professionalizing our arbos, mm, I, I think uh, uh, when you say I when I, I think it means um, professionalizing, meaning they should be professional organizations. Organizations. So oh uh, yeah. So in terms of yeah, yun sinabi na nga na they should have this uh, internal controls like policies, procedures. dapat clear yung mga yon. They should be transparent. Mm -hmm. So and. Uh, in, and the way the financial transactions are are provided, dapat claro even their financial statements by transparency. Okay. So so it's it's like uh, any company; it should mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. uh, run like any any company. Okay. Um, kanina there is a question about BARM. No, I think this was from um, uh, Director Dan Agustin of Masaganang Sakan, and he is asking about agrarian reform in the BARM. And according to Yusek Bernie, um, okay, nagshot siya. By law, BARM is autonomous, so we respect that and cannot interfere, but we can coordinate with them for the benefit of the Arvos in the area. So they can always coordinate with the ministry. Um, uh, for agriculture and agrarian reform in the barn. No. Okay. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, okay. This one is from Richard Melkapilis, and this is about uh, avoiding elite, elite capture, no? Um, to affect our bulls, no? And so, would you have any prescription or any suggestions uh, so that this will not happen? Parang kanina, uh, Dr. Balisteros, you mentioned that it would be better that uh, Arbos would have a mixed membership. I think you mentioned this. So, hindi lang talaga very needy, Arb very needy members. There should also be members na medyo well off. But how can we make sure that, you know, the, uh, the more progressive or more well off members, th there's still this equity when it comes to, um, you know, sharing sharing from the benefits of the arbos and that hindi hindi lang pupunta dun sa mga ano talaga uh, well off yeah so, definitely i think uh, yeah thank you for that question i think in the models alternative cooperative models which i showed um mm -hmm. very clear don na yung user ownership principle okay. is actually remains so meaning na hindi ka lang nandoon just to invest your your money and just to have more shares so it means that you are uh, a patron you're a participant in that and then ang ang key lang is you should have you, you should have some controls or regulations mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in the distribution of your uh, residual claims uh, in uh, who should have uh, priority in the redeemability of your uh, of your investments in the uh, in the appreciability of your investment in some models actually di na appreciable hindi ibig sabihin kung ano yung value ng shares mo hindi na siya uh, there are no there are no additional uh, there, are, there are no increases in that so uh, there are ways actually there are several ways of of uh, of uh, coming up with alternate with uh, different models at the same time ensuring na uh, um, equitable pa rin siya in terms of wala yung um, yung binention doon na, na it's not the wealthy who will gain more from the from the business thank you very much Peng. okay we have uh, uh, 
Another interesting question from Dr. Jun Virola. Any findings on the management capacity of Arbos? Internal capital buildup and farm succession are indeed very important issues for Arbos and co-ops. So this will ensure they can finance their growth ambitions and be prepared for the future. Um, Ivory, would you like to go first? Uh, did, did you see this in your results or perhaps Mam Peng can, can answer this? I think Mam Peng can answer uh -huh. it better. Yes, because <laughs> so, actually, so, Mo Yung, she looked really into this, ano eh. <laughs> what? Yeah, can you can you repeat the question, Sheila? Okay, so, so. this is from uh, Dr. Shumberola. Any findings on the management capacity of our bows? I think the sa mga indicators, mm -hmm. diba, meron ka may low, may may mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. poor, yeah, may yeah. Uh, low yung maturity, no? So, yeah. okay, internal capital build up and farm succession are indeed very important issues for our bulls and co-ops. This will mm -hmm. ensure they can, can uh, they can finance their growth ambitions and be prepared for the future. Yeah. Yeah, actually we if you look at indicate yung indicators ng organizational management. Yes. I hope uh -huh. we can have a person from Dar who can really explain yung itema, no? That's mm -hmm. the monitoring tool. Na, na, uh, it uh, it looks at the vision, mission, uh, and goals of your organization. It looks as the it looks at the strategic and annual operations, and yung policies, systems and procedures in place, the functionality mm -hmm. also of officers and committees. So, uh, sabi ko nga, I, we, we don't have the, we only get in, uh, uh, no, um, very limited information, no? But it's something that uh, can be, um, can be further um, look at using the mm -hmm. item, item uh, uh, monitoring tool. In fact, you can look at it over time. Kasi mm -hmm. they started in 2015. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's pass uh, there, there are indicators and it's possible to really assess yung organizational uh, management just just focusing on that of the oh. different arbos. Kasi maganda the way they do the survey. Eh. It's not just one-time survey. And uh, the survey is done by self uh uh, staff ng ng dar so talaga ini interview bawat officers bawat uh, members so it's not just something na na the it's not the usual survey that you just fill up a questionnaire oh. and do they yung mga doc, documents oh. they look at that oh. and do they follow through the arbos so they can see if there's any development from low maturity over time na na achieve nila yung high maturity so hopefully yeah, ganun, ano, hindi lang one time na ano na survey. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not one time. So ah, actually, very meron, uh, since mm -hmm. 2015, meron meron lang nag change in terms of some questions in 2015 was not there in 2018. But of, uh, I think the 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 main or the core questions are are uh, uh, can be assessed over time. Mm -hmm. Thank actually, you very I saw Mel, I saw Melba tutor in in the participants kanina so oh, she, oh she was the consultant of oh, that item so probably okay. can Melba. she can uh, <laughs> provide Melba, more information yes yes you're right Peng. okay and we have um um you know uh important um uh, comment here from uh, Dr. Arling Inocencio of of uh, De La Salle University, he, she said, given that a lot of outcomes and impacts depend on the capacities of the Arbos, it may be worth looking at how DAR is currently doing its organization and capacity building of Arbos and how this can be redesigned or improved to uh, produce more capable and enterprise ready Arbos. So if there is anyone from DAR who could share with us how you, how the capacity building is uh, being conducted for the Arbos, you can also, you can share your insights. Uh, provide your inputs uh, dito po sa ating discussion. Okay. Uh, Yusek Bernie has a response to the question of uh, Mr. Lucas regarding professionalization. He said, uh, professionalization is not bringing in new people. Is there a broad talent base in the Arbos? Okay. Uh, okay. What else? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
let me go back to some of our older questions um from nova Nguyen, uh do you think that in some way agrarian reform and land ownership will help reduce the tendency of farmers farmers sons and daughters to, to transition away from farming or agriculture do you think they can experience upward mobility while staying in agri farming and not needing to migrate to cities uh ivory can i get your your um response to this your insights to this do, do you think um you know having you know secured uh property rights land tenure would help um honestly it depends on the parang exposure of the sons and daughters on the farm because currently um yeah they're more inclined to go into non-farm employment employment yes mm -hmm. so i think it depends on the exposure of of these mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. perhaps we can ask uh mr marlon no, no? mr talavera sa pangi laguna ba sir ano yung nakikita yung trend are there many young people going into farming so let's say yung mga anak anak ng mga farmers nyo ano po ba ang nagigini nilang ano uh, ini embrace din ba nila yung agriculture or they go into other uh, professions? Uh, may, may mga places po. Depende po kasi sa place na pinaglalagyan uh, ng cooperatives. No? Uh, may mga lugar kasi na talagang simula't simula farming na yung uh, naging negosyo, naging hanap buhay ng mga magulang. Pero sa ngayon po kasi talaga yung trend na siguro mga 30% na lang po yung mga estudyante or yung mga na gusto mag-aral ng agrikultura. Uh, mostly, gusto nila yung mga ngayon ho, siyempre, internet or employment sa ibang lugar, yun po yung hinahanap nila. Sa, sa akin ko palagay po, depende nga po yung sa sinasabi ni Mama Iborina, sa training po kasi, kasi ako katulad ko po yung anak ko, mm. itinrain ko siya, management graduate siya pero bumabalik siya sa agriculture. Kasi oh, okay. lagi ko lagi ko siyang kasama, lagi kong inintroduce doon sa mga clients ko, this is my son, uh, the future agriculturist na papalit sa akin pero hindi agriculture ang tinapos niya. Ngayon, nagpipilit po siyang magpumasok sa agriculture kahit po hindi agriculture yung pinasok niya. So, depende po siguro sa training ng magulang at saka doon sa kinalakihan niyang environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Actually, um, hindi pa agriculture yung tinapos niya, pero sabi niyo nga kanina, agriculture needs three things uh, to become, you know, to become viable. Science, business, and art. So, yung management, tinap management uh, course na tinapos niya, yun yung sa business side naman ng agriculture. Di po ba? Apo, apo, apo. I'm very sorry, uh, I cut you. Um, sige. Yes, ma'am, if I may add po, um, Currently, yung DAR, um, they also give uh, land dun sa mga agricultural fresh graduates. Mm. So, this is to encourage nga yung ating mga kabataan na, na mag-venture pa rin sa agriculture. So, nabibigyan po ng lupa. I think meron na sa Palawan. May ganun. Okay. That's good. Thing. That's uh Good to hear. Okay, we have a question here from Maricel Solatre, and perhaps uh, I can uh, throw this to anon, Mr. Marlon Talavera again. No, is there any benefit from being a member of farmers' organizations in terms of having agriculture agricultural insurance, sir? Um, uh, ano ba yung let, let's say yung arbo po ninyo? Mm -mm. Yes po, malaking tulong po siya, malaking tulong po yung pagkakaroon ng insurance dun sa sa agricultural ano po. Kasi sa ngayon po kasi hindi natin alam kung ano yung pagkakataon, ano yung sitwasyon ng panahon. Mostly po kasi yung farmers natin ay doon natatalo sa pagkakaroon ng mga kalamidad, pagkakaroon ng mga hindi inaasahang pangyayari. So yung agricultural insurance po is very important para po makarecover yung farmer natin. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marlon. We have a uh, very good question here. Yung sa gender dimension naman, but I'm not sure if this was covered in your study, but perhaps you can also give your insights, Ivory and uh, Peng, no? So from uh, Dr. Mary Roselis, 
since women are involved in household decisions with their male partners, did you also interview women regarding their domains in the household economy and other concerns uh, that need to be taken into consideration in assessing risk? Uh, I think na, na cover ito ng ibang PIDS studies natin, uh, but you may, may want to um, uh, respond to this also based on your you know insights nyo. Uh, Peng, um, I would go muna, then we will go to the verbal mm -hmm. So, for the two policy papers that I discussed, um, hindi masyadong na discuss yung gender dimension, hindi siya masyadong na tackle. So, I'll just share yung um, information on the kung ilan yung bahagdan or share ng um, female na CLOA beneficiaries. So, mm -hmm. based on the data that I gathered um, from 2000 to 2015, yung cumulative number of CLOA beneficiaries, 33% uh, lang ang female na ano, CLOA beneficiaries. So, malaking portion, 67% ang male po na CLOA beneficiaries. Oh. Okay. Ivory, thank, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ballesteros, uh, would you like to um, provide your input uh, into this conversation? If, if it is okay with you, if not, uh -oh. yeah, yeah. no problem. Uh, actually, I haven't really looked at uh, gender or tackled gender issues uh, for this study or or for my, from my previous study. So I cannot make a very good uh, response to that. Oh, but okay. what you notice, but it would be good, I think, to look at the organization of ARBOS. Uh, because what we see is uh, if you look at the composition of the board of directors mm -hmm. and, and, and of, of officials, usually the leadership is with the men and mm -hmm. yung, uh, uh, and yung mga record keeping ganon are, are with the women. So I don't okay. know if that has a, <laughs> that has some, yung traditional uh, roles, no? Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mr. Marlon Talavera, sa ano ba, sa inyo bang arbo? Ano ba yung, uh, in terms of tasks, in terms of responsibilities, in terms of membership to, ano ba yung uh, male versus female na percentage? Uh, 60 40 po. 60 percent ano? po yung male, male? percent po yung babae. Okay. Um, so, in terms maybe. naman po, sa mga officers, meron po ba kayong mga officers na kababaihan or babae? Yes po. At ano Pero po yung po yung position? Yung, padulad ko po, chairman, ang vice chairman po, babae. Tapos, hmm. a treasurer po, babae, accounting system po namin, mga babae. Kasi mas, ano po sila, mas uh, accurate. Yung mga babae, okay. pagka binigyan mo ng responsibility kasi sila, Ako nga po, magbibilin lang ako. Pag piniling ko po dun sa treasurer or dun sa aming vice, vice chairman, accurate po yung, ano, yung response nila na, na natutugunan kaagad yung sinasabi namin. Okay, pero pag sa lalaki nagbilin? <laughs> sa lalaki po kasi medyo, ano eh, medyo uh, marami po kasi dun sa cooperative na sa lugar namin. Yung mga lalaki po medyo irresponsable pag hindi mo na... na na susubaybayan. Pero pag andun ka naman at uh, sinusubaybayan mo sila, okay naman ho yung mga lalaki. Okay. Thank you very much, Marlon. No? Uh, baka pwedeng mag- uh, perhaps uh, I have a follow-up question kasi dun sa kanina sinabi mo that you are having difficulty um, uh, developing second liners. No? So, paano ninyo ina-address ito sa inyong organization? Kasi importante ito eh. Opo. Uh, ngayon po, ang ginagawa namin ay series of trainings po dun sa mga batang mas younger kaysa sa amin. Uh, aming sinasama na sila sa mga meeting, sinasama na sa mga gawain, and yung pong mga pagdalo sa mga seminar po na kinakandak ngayon, although kahit virtual sila, ay... Ini-involve na po namin yung mga kabataan at iminumulat na namin doon sa mga, mostly po kasi ito mga anak-anak na lang ng mga officers eh. So, in-educate na po namin yung aming mga second liners para po pagdating ng panahon na yung pong mga uh, old, old officers, actually may mga officers po kasi akong mga 
ano na, senior citizen. Kaya nagde-develop na po kami ng mga second liners. Uh, mostly okay. po sa accounting system, yung, yun ang pina, pinakang critical na ma-develop mo para yung pong yung recordings, accounting system ay maayos. Uh, doon po kasi yung pinagbabasihan ng mga tao, yung trust nila, parang doon nakapokus sa pag nag-invest sila, ay dapat hindi mawala o maging maayos yung sistema. Yun po yung ginagawa namin ngayon para po makapag-develop kami ng mga second liners. Second liners, okay. Thank you very much for that, Marlon. We have... um. A response here from Alma, Algeria. Uh, perhaps, I, I'm not sure if Alma is from Dar or someone who has knowledge about, uh, you know, the um, the projects being implemented by Dar. But she has something, she said something about the ITEMA. So, sabi niya, ITEMA measures the institutional uh, or organizational and enterprise development of an ARBO annually. Okay? through documents being presented during the conduct of assessment. Thank you very much, Alma, for uh, the additional information you shared with us. Okay. Um, we are down to our last two questions. Uh, and okay. Okay. How is risk? Okay. Dr. Mary Roselli said, okay. The earlier part of the question should be read as the context of the gender question. Apologies for that, uh, Dr. Reselis, no? Um, okay. Okay, let's go back to some of the earlier questions that uh, we receive. And, okay, Mr. Adok. Uh, Director Daniel Agustin, what intervention should should the government take to further strengthen the Largos and 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 the Pargos? Um, Peng, would you like to answer this? Uh, since you looked into, you know, you had a deeper look into the um, Arbos and Largos. I think you 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 made um, yeah, your your recommendations are you know. You expounded on this in your presentation. Perhaps you can you can um, repeat some of them. Um, prioritize probably uh, according to importance. You know how can we capacitate uh, Yeah, uh, I, I think from the from what we see in terms of how they. Uh, they are now, they are organized. Um, yeah, uh, well, of course, capacity, how do you capacitate them? So it's not just mainly providing the, the lectures. So uh, kailangan sustain mo yung capacity building kasi it takes time. Hindi lang siya one time lecture, two times mm -hmm. or, or twice. So it has to be really um, um, may follow through. May mga follow through yung uh, capacity building. Mm -hmm. And then, for instance, if you do livelihood uh, capacity building, you ensure na, na that would actually be uh, provided as an output of the training and uh, uh, yung anong business model. So, th those kind of uh, capacity building activities. And I, I think it's, I, I just mentioned, it's very important about yung capitalization ng and Arbus, no? how do you build solidarity? How do you build uh, uh, trust? So, uh, important yan, but that, that's within the organization itself. So, sabi nga, ano, you should have clearly, kung meron nga tayong certification, I don't know if CDA, I think, certifies financial performance, but I'm not sure if it certifies also yung management capability of uh, cooperatives. Um, capability. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's important na ano eh, yung they grow into cooperatives, not just farmers organization. Kasi mas, mas structured nga yung cooperative. Rad, uh, and then uh, to, to attract more investments and to, so that capital can be retained in, in your organization, there could be other ways of restructuring uh, or more flexibility in terms of yung, 
uh, transferability as well as redeemability of your of your of the capital. Hmm. I think that's those are uh, the key the key points that I okay. mentioned. Okay. Thank uh, I, you. Maybe see uh, our our discussant could wow. add to that. Being I, the practitioner. Yes. 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 Oh. Uh, 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 uh. We can go to uh, Mr. Marlon, but first let me call Ivory. Ivory, would you have anything to add as to your recommendations and how we can further uh, strengthen our cause? Um, I think we need to ensure the sustainability nitong mga um, organizations in general like itong sinabi ni Sir Marlon na yung mga second liners nila na nila this is very important um, especially syempre um itong mga trainings mga coaching mm -hmm. hindi naman to forever <laughs> na ibibigay din sa ating mga organization so within them within their organization mm -hmm. kailangan nakaplano na paano ma-sustain yung mga yung skills and knowledge na na impart po doon sa kanilang organization okay thank you very much ivory and uh mr marlon uh any thoughts po ang masasabi ninyo pa paano pa mas papapalakas ang mga organisasyon na tulad ng sa inyo at um i meron din po tayong um, isang katanungan dito mula kay Edgar, di ba yung organisasyon na mas kailangan mula sa ahensya ng gobyerno para mas mapalakas kayo? Marlon? Uh, sa ngayon po kasi, meron na pong mga nakakasang training para po dun sa organisasyon. Ngayon po, okay. ang yun po ang po, uh, isama, tama yung sabi ni Ma'am Ivory, dapat within the organization, makapag-develop ka nung magko-continue ng mga trainings na yun. Uh, tulad po ng ginagawa ko as chairman of the cooperative, ako na din po yung nagsisilbing trainer nila. Ako na din po yung nagsisilbing uh, taga subaybay, taga pagturo. Kasi yun pong mga second liners, pag po tinigilan mo ng support or ng subaybay, nawawala din po sila sa direksyon eh. So within the, within the cooperative po, may mga dinedevelop na din po kami mga trainers. Kasi may mga trainings naman po, trainers training na ina-assist po naman ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno na yung yung mga official po mismo like sa educational uh, yung aming committee on education sila po yung dire-diretso yung gumagabay doon sa mga second liners. Thank you Mr. Marlon at siguro para sa ating huling uh, katanungan, meron tayong magandang tanong nito from Felix Dante ano. How about po yung partnership po niyo with academe with uh, the private sector i think kanina may binanggit po ninyo na patuloy po kayo nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga businesses no sa healthy up may binanggit pa kayong healthy options eh. in terms of, of um uh para po sa uh, pag-market ng uh, uh, but how about po partnering with um, universities po as well as sa Laguna, no? Nagginagawa po ito in yung or yung mga po na na nakukuha po ninyo sa ganong uh, partnership sa pagkipagumnayan po sa mga eskwela. Yes po. Ah, uh, sa ngayon yung nakaraan po, ah, uh, actually yung taga UPLB po na mga nagkakandak po ng mga mga thesis. Uh, doon po sila, ginawa po nilang thesis yung co-op mismo. So, nagawa uh, po sila ng data ng mga ano, kung paano po siya palala kasi. Ginawan po nila kami ng isang guide, guide na, ano, na libro kung paano po mapataas at mapalago yung cooperative. Ngayon din po may mga partnership din po kami uh, sa ibang ahensya tulad po ng DA. Uh, last yesterday nga po nakipag-usap at umakyat po doon si Director Calderon. Para po tingnan kung ano pa po yung mga kailangan nung ko para po mas lumakas pa siya sa ngayon. Kasi malaki na po yung involvement namin sa agrikultura. Uh, although yung production po kasi nandun, uh, naapektuhan lang po talaga nung uh, pandemic. So, 
Yung iba pa pong institusyon, meron po kami mga existing tie-ups pa na, na mga buyers na nagpapatuloy pa naman po kahit po hindi ganun kalaki yung volume. So ngayon po ay uh, kahapon po meron din po akong kinausap na institutional buyer na siya po yung tutulong sa cooperative para po may market lahat yung uh, based on the volume of production na ikinakasa namin para sa kanila. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Marlon uh, Talavera. So, just to cap our discussion, may I request uh, our uh, speakers for, um, you know, their final words uh, very quickly. Uh, let me start with Ivory, then uh, I'll, then uh, Dr. Balesteros, and finally, Mr. Talavera. I wanted to call you Sekborni Kayalang. He's al already, he's on the road and probably have, uh, has a poor internet connection. Ivory, please go ahead. All right. So for my final words, po, um, Dar is already doing um, a lot of reforms within its um, department. May mga improvements na po para mapabilis itong parcelization and yung uh, pag-implement ng uh, other programs nila. So I hope um, ipagpatuloy lang po ito ng Dar and bagtuloy tuloy yung partnership between and among uh, government agencies like yung DA partnership with. Uh, DAR, um, with DTI, so um, sana magtuloy-tuloy po yung mga ganong partnerships. And sa side naman ng mga farmers and farmers organization, um, mag, ano, uh, magsama-sama po tayo, uh, palakasin natin yung mga organizations natin um, para uh, makadagdag tayo dun sa, ano, sa pressure para mas mapabuti pa yung pag-implement ng iba't ibang government policies. And um, syempre, sa pag natin ng development ng buong agriculture sector, um, hindi natin pwedeng iwanan yung ating mga farmers. So, um, kailangan laging kasama sila dun sa pag-unlad. Yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Malisteros, uh, any final words that you would like to say to our participants, ma'am? Yeah, just two things. First is that uh, um, at, this, at this point in... At given this uh, era no, of uh, industrial revolution, it, it's very important for farmers should be uh, to be part of an organization. And there, it has been well established in the literature, for instance, that uh, the farmers or members of cooperatives and uh, in particular um, have higher welfare. And this study was done in different developing countries. And the second point is that yung participation ng small farmers in value chain. And this is only possible kung part of the organization. By yourself, individually, you cannot do it. So, uh, yun yung importance of the organization. And it's also important to be part of the value chain kasi given uh, sophisticated markets uh, and demands of uh, consumers, um, I think uh, you will have to be part of that uh, agricultural uh, value chain. Thank you. Sheila. And thank you very much, Dr. Balesteros. And of course, Mr. Talavera, Marlon Talavera, meron po ba kayong gustong uh, iparating sa ating mga uh, nakikinig, nanonood bilang inyong panghuling pananalita, sir? Uh, bilang kinatawan po ng mga magsasaka, ay ako po'y naniniwala na kaya po natin pakainin ang ating mga kapwa Pilipino kung tayo po ay magtutulong-tulong. Uh, hindi lang po doon sa uh, pakikipag-ugnayan sa lahat po ng ahensya at pagtutulong-tulong po ng bawat isa ay magkakaroon po tayo ng katagumpayan kung ito po ay pagpapatuloy natin sa mga darating pang panahon. Maraming salamat po sa pag sa inyong lahat. At maraming salamat din po sa inyo, sir. Uh, Yusek Bernie, thank you very much po sa pag um, sa panahon na uh, inukon niyo po sa amin. Uh, ingat po kayo sa inyong biyahe and we hope to invite you again in our future webinars dito po sa PIDS. Uh, friends, please join me in thanking all our speakers, Dr. Marife Balesteros, Ms. Ivory Galang, um, Undersecretary uh, Bernie and Undersecretary uh, Bernie Antiford and Mr. Marlon Talavera for the uh, valuable information and insights that they have shared with us this afternoon. Let us give them a big virtual clap. Okay, at marami pong salamat sa ating mga participants who participate or who are joined sa ating open forum. Okay, 
Um, inaasahan po namin na naging makabuluhan sa inyong ating talakayan ngayong hapong ito. Ang mga magsasaka ay ang pangunahin nating kaagapay. Um, upang masiguro na may sapat po tayong pagkain sa ating hapagkainan, may pandemya man o wala. So, nararapat lamang na bigyan natin sila ng sapat na halaga sa pamamagitan ng mga angkop na programa na magtataas ng antas ng kanilang kabuhayan tungo sa isang mas progresibo na agriculture sector. At bago po tayo uh, tuloy yung magtapos, uh, nais ko pong i-announce uh, yung um, winners po ng ating um, uh, draw kanina, okay. Um, ang ating pong winners ay sina Cyrus Polycarpio, Dacudil Tampus, and Mia uh, Dalio. So, Cyrus Polycarpio, Dacudil Tampus, and Mia Dalio, nanalo kayo sa ating draw for today and our um, uh, webinar team will get in touch with you for your prize. Okay. Um, Okay, so before we finally close, um, we have some reminders. So you can access all the presentations from um, the PIDS website. So nasa uh, screen po yung ating uh, uh, links, no? At ipapadala rin po natin ito sa lahat ng mga nag-attend. Um, okay, so... And uh, you can please help us improve our webinars by answering our survey. Uh, our your comments are important to us to um, improve our webinars and also please continue to follow us on our social media pages so marami pong salamat sa mga tumutok sa facebook at uh, uh, tumutok din sa ating uh, sa ating uh, twitter sa live tweeting na ginawa natin ng highlights ng webinar na ito and please always uh, visit our website for our uh, knowledge products and services and for uh, the month of june we have two remaining webinars okay next week june 23 which is wednesday we have the navigating the new normal restarting and rebuilding global msmes okay um and then uh, the following day on thursday we will have our webinar our usual Thursday webinar, and this time we will talk about the senior high school program. We will uh, look into the senior high school graduates' prospects and challenges in the labor market. And, um, of course, we would like to thank all the representatives from uh, the academe, from the government, civil society, um, media, the private sector for joining with us today and we hope to see you again in our webinars uh, in the coming weeks. And so friends, um, this uh, concludes our webinar for this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed too. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Maraming salamat po ulit kay Kina Yusik Bernie Cruz at sa ating uh, mga speakers. Uh, lalong-lalo na kay Mr. Marlon Talavera at sa ating kasamahan sa PIDS si Dr. Marite Ballesteros at si Ms. Ivory Galang. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat.